Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Line of God Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the book of, continuing the book of Psalms, Psalm 89, Maskil of Ethan the Ezraite. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known the faithfulness um, to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my servant. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea, when the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces, as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south thou hast created. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk. O Lord, in the light of thy countenance, in the name they shall rejoice all the day, and in the righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Then thou spakest in vision to thy Holy One, and saidest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statues and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. But thou hast cast off and abhorred. Thou hast been wrought with thine anointed. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that pass by the, spo by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease, and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth hast, hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame, Selah. 
How long, Lord, wilt thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth, and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. Lord, where are thy former loving kindness, which thou sworest unto David in thy truth? Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. Wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think um, this chapter is actually so amazing. I, I, I really don't know um, if there is particularly any analysis I want to offer. I mean, the chapter reads, you know, like a story in terms of the discussing how the Lord made those the the promises, the 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 covenant with Abraham. I um, mean, you know, swearing unto David. Um, Yeah, it's it's quite beautiful. Um, I just wanted to um, to make sure I remembered this one correctly. So there are like two basic like covenants that are different from one another. The first is the covenant that the Lord establishes with Abraham. He says to Abraham that to you and your seed after you, I'll give you the land of Israel for your people. That will be your home basically. So that's one covenant. The other one is one he swears to David. Where he tells David, he says, I will give you your son, I will set one of the sons, um, one of your sons upon the throne. If they keep his covenant, then they will, they will, their line will sit forever on the throne. Of course, as we know, God, remember, God promises this to Solomon. He says to Solomon, if you obey my commandments, your line will rule forever. But Solomon doesn't obey the Lord's commandments. Solomon goes off. In his um, and 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 and, um, and adulterers. So, of course, very fame infamously, I should say, Solomon is known for having seven hundred wives and three hundred concubines. And um, so, as a result, Solomon does not keep the commandments of the Lord. And so, the Davidic line. If you look at the greatness of the Davidic line, um, it you know when you think about Solomon, you think about the construction of the first temple, David, all the the you know David slaying Goliath. The, the persecutions from Saul, the battles with the, the non-believers, and how David emerges victorious, gives Solomon a land of peace. Solomon constructs the first temple and then goes off. And some of the Davidic line after Solomon is good, and some of it is bad. And ultimately it leads to the fall, the Babylonian captivity, and ultimately, finally, we get those verses in, in Nehemiah, um, Esther, etc., that talk about, finally, we get the verse, the construction, of the second Jewish temple, where we, we see again a reference to, of course, my interpretation of myself, the Spirit of God comes back, uh, comes back in terms of, we see a reference to the Spirit, the free Spirit, where um, the, I believe it may be, I think it's in Zechariah 4, 6, I believe, the verse is something like, uh, how will the second Jewish con temple be constructed? God says, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit. And so the people, um, so the second Jewish temple is constructed. And so there's a lot of turmoil, is the point. A lot of turmoil because that second covenant doesn't, not covenant, but that God tells David, I'll give you all this if you actually obey his statutes and commandments. And uh, of course, um, you, know, you know, starting with Solomon, you start to see that decline, the Babylonian captivity. And then of course, finally things start to, to trend upwards with the construction of the second Jewish temple. And of course, ultimately, um, the coming of the Christ, which is the culminating achievement of the Spirit of God. So, that's a this is a beautiful chapter because it does read like a story. So, I didn't know how much analysis to offer, but I thought that was it was very enjoyable because I, I loved reading them. And so, with that I'll go ahead and um, end the Bible reading there for today, and transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's daily dive video. 
Since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I worked my software developer job. I have created this Daily Dive video for 8.3.23, and I have started playing Baldur's Gate 3. And so look forward to that playlist. I am so excited um, to bring you uh, Baldur's Gate 3 uh, gameplay. And um, thanks, Larry and Studios. Thanks, Mr. Vinka, for an amazing game. And with that, I want to go ahead and um, say uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.